Let's suppose we take a carbonyl molecule and we place it into water. Basically, a nucleophilic addition reaction of the carbonyl compound will take place. Water will act as a nucleophile attacking the carbon of the carbonyl and we form a product we call the hydrate. So this is our hydrate product. Now the question that we want to explore in this lecture is what exactly affects, what influences the equilibrium of this nucleophilic addition reaction that is what affects how much of the product is actually formed and how much of the reactant is actually used up at equilibrium. So basically, three things influence the equilibrium of the nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl compound. And the first thing is the size of these R groups that are attached to the carbon of the carbonyl. Now, if you recall, we said that the double bonds of an alkene are more stable when they are more substituted and less stable when they are less substituted. And the same thing is true for the double bonds inside our carbonyl, the double bond between carbon and oxygen. So the more substituted the carbon-oxygen double bond is, the more stable that carbonyl compound is and the more stable our double bond is the less reactive it is so that basically means if these groups are let's say methyl groups that will make our double bond a stable bond compared to let's say if these groups were H groups and that means our stability increases as we go from the formaldehyde to our aldehyde to our ketone. Ketones are more stable than these because our double bond is more substituted. Now, what about our product? So notice that the angle between our groups in the carbonyl is 120, which is relatively large. However, the angle between these groups in our product, the hydrate product, is only 109 degrees. So that means on average, these groups are closer to one another in the product than they are in our reactant. Now that basically means for the case of our product, the larger these groups are, the less stable this is because the more stair hindrance we have between these atoms, these groups on our product. So we see that on the other hand, the larger the substituted groups are on the hydrate product, the less stable our product is because the more stair hindrance we have in that product. Basically, the, the larger these two groups are, the more bumping we will have between these groups and the greater the electrostatic repulsion will be. And that means that the greater these groups are, the less product we form. The smaller they are, the more product we will form. So our stability increases as we go from this to this product. So in this case, we have relatively small H groups. In this case, we have relatively large methyl groups. And so this is more stable, this is less stable, and this is least stable. In this case, this is most stable, this is less stable, and this is least, uh, least stable. So we see that these will basically be very reactive and they will form stable products. But these will not be as reactive and so we will not form a lot of product because on the product side, these groups will bump each other while in this case, this will be stable because we have a very substituted double bond. Now, the second thing that basically affects the equilibrium of this nucleophilic reaction is what is attached to the alpha position of the carbonyl. Now the, uh, the alpha position is basically whatever is attached to this carbon that is right next to our carbon that contains the double bond. So this is our alpha 
carbon position. So we see that if we have some type of electron withdrawing group, such as chloride, that is attached to our alpha position carbon, the less stable this entire reactant, this entire carbonyl will be. So electron withdrawing groups attached to the alpha position of the carbonyl compound decrease the stability of the carbonyl. And if the carbonyl is less stable, that means it's more reactive and it's more likely that it will form our product. So why is that? Well, let's take a look at the following diagram. This basically describes why this is true. So the chloride is more electronegative than our carbon and so it will pull away the electron density towards that chloride and away from the carbon and that will place a relatively large partial positive charge on this carbon. At the same exact time, this carbon will also have a partial positive charge because this electronegative oxygen atom will pull away the electron density from this carbon. So we have two partial charges right next to one another on these two carbons and that will increase the electrostatic repulsion. And that basically means it will destabilize this carbonyl molecule and because it's more destabilized, it will be much more reactive and it is likely that it will react to form our product. So if we compare to this case where this carbon is not attached to an electronegative atom as in this case, so this carbon will have a very tiny partial positive charge while in this case this carbon will have a much greater partial negative charge. So this does not have an electron withdrawing chloride and so will not have the same destabilizing effect. So this is destabilized and this is not destabilizing. So if we attach our electronegative group to the alpha carbon position, that will basically destabilize the reactant and we will produce more of the hydrate product. Now, the final thing, the final factor that I want to discuss is the resonance stabilization of this reactant. So what happens if one of these R groups is an H group and the other R group is a benzene molecule, a phenyl group as shown in the following diagram. Basically, if we have a phenyl group, we will have many resonance stabilized forms. So this is one form and this is a second form. So we can imagine that the second form involves this pi bond basically forming a pi bond here displacing this onto here forming the following resonance stabilized structure. Now if this bond goes onto here the positive charge jumps onto here and finally if this goes here the positive charge jumps onto here. So we see we have a total of four resonance stabilized structures and only two are actually drawn. However, if this reactant actually undergoes a nucleophilic addition of water, we see that this resonance stabilization is actually lost. In the product hydrate, we do not have the same resonance stabilization as we have in this case. We simply have this benzene ring and and it cannot actually interact with this carbon because this carbon is sp3 hybridized while in this case it's sp2 hybridized so carbonyl molecules that are resonance stabilized can you uh, uh, can lose their stabilization during a nucleophilic addition to that carbonyl and if that happens that is unstabilizing. That is not very stabilizing and that means this is not likely to actually take place. And so we'll have much of the reactants left over at equilibrium and not much of the products will be formed. 
So, once again, let's overview what we just discussed. Basically, three, th uh, three things influence how much of the product we have left over and or how much of the product is formed and how much of the reactant is left over at equilibrium. So, the larger these groups are, the more stabilized the reactant is and the less stabilized our product is. So, if we have large groups, we're not going to have much of the product at equilibrium and we will have a lot of the reactant still left over. Now, if we actually have an inductive group, if we have some type of electron withdrawing group attached to the alpha carbon of the carbonyl, that will basically increase the rate of the reaction and we will form more of the products at equilibrium. And finally, if we have our carbonyl reactant resonance stabilized, that means this will be stabilized, it won't be reactive, and so we will not form much of our product. So at equilibrium, we'll have a lot of this left over and not too much of this actually formed.